Creepypasta Readings Number 1 Four Sonic the Hedgehog Stories Story 1 Sonic X Episode 79 Good Night Sweet Princess I once had a job at the 4Kids Company a few years back, the company who produced the poorly made English dub of Sonic X. I didn't care about the dub though, I only wanted my money and I hated the show anyway. Sonic was dead to me by then. On the internet, I heard a rumor that Sega wanted to continue this horrible abomination of a cartoon. However, 4Kids refused to give up copyrights for the show, so it was discontinued. I heard a colleague of mine and the boss talking about the future of Sonic X after refusing to give Cosmo, a character introduced in the third season, to Bioware, who wanted to include her in a new game titled Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. I wanted to ignore the conversation and wanted to proceed on copying my papers when suddenly the word episode 79 fell. Okay, I hated that anime so much because of the pink hedgehog Amy Rose who was constantly chasing after Sonic with her ridiculous dress and high pitched annoying voice, but I knew there were only 78 episodes. I stopped and walked over to the two asking about the episode but my colleague told me they already got rid of it. I shrugged it off and went back to doing my work. At 4 p.m. I finally went home. However, when I passed the trash containers by the facility, cur curiosity took over me and I peeked inside. I noticed a DVD case without any cover, but a CD inside. I took it out and brushed off some dirt. The DVD had episode 79 written on it with a black permanent marker. Bingo! I had found the lost episode. Looking around, I didn't see anyone watching me, so I took the DVD case with me. I wasn't really excited about the episode and hoped it wasn't some stupid Somari crap polluting my TV screen. I only wanted to pull the episode onto my computer and post it on YouTube to gain some fame. I got home and the first thing I did is to put my bag away before getting myself some dinner. For some reason I was really hungry. When I came back from work the next week on a Wednesday, I remember the DVD case was still lying around somewhere in my living room. I walked over and opened the case. It had Project Sonic episode, 79, episode 79 written on it, also with permanent marker. I noticed it was starting to rain and I closed the window to make sure nothing got wet. After I cleaned the DVD, it wasn't a trash can after all, I walked over to my HD TV and put the DVD inside my DVD player. Let's see what'll come up, I thought to myself. The DVD started instantly with the well-known intro from the third season of Sonic X. The annoying theme song blared in the speakers of my TV. Nothing odd until I saw there was actually the Japanese logo instead of the English one. I guess I snagged a non-dubbed version. I was glad not to see the fucked up edits 4 kids dared to do. I could understand a lot of Japanese being a proud weeaboo anime fan. I'm sure you knew what I'm talking about. The intro ended with each character posing in a group picture with Eggman in the background. I noticed Chris was missing from the group picture. I guess it was some tweak since Chris went home in episode 78. Just as the image faded to black, a loud clap of thunder managed to cause a power failure. It was only my house when I asked my neighbors about it. My laptop was still working since I left it on and now ran on battery. So I manually opened the disc platform, my DVD player could be opened manually. It had a button that opened the case that worked without any power, like a Nintendo GameCube for example, and, th and took the DVD out before closing it again and inserted it into my laptop. Surprisingly, it didn't play the DVD but showed the insides of the DVD, computer files. Next to the DVD's main file, I noticed there was a folder called Prisa. Confused at the name of this mysterious folder, I opened it out of curiosity and it showed an alternate DVD file. I double clicked it and it started to play the file, only to be disappointed by a constant black screen. Still, I waited patiently for the beginning of the intro, but it didn't come. I've waited for about 5 minutes before moving my mouse to close the file. I did not forget! I jumped at the distorted female voice as the screen flashed red for a split second. I closed out the file. That moment nearly gave me a heart attack. The thunderstorm outside of my window was getting worse and louder. It was getting closer. Since everything was already turned off, I didn't bother about it and e exited the folder to play the original file. It played the intro, Chris was still missing as usual. 
The episode started with Amy and Cream sitting by a table with Vanilla, Cream's mother. They were enjoying cake and tea. I was disappointed when Amy started to cry out for Sonic's love again. Vanilla suddenly slammed her fist down on the table and leaned close to Amy. You know nothing about love, you idiot, she yelled at her. Cream cringed and backed away, Cheese making his usual chow noises, looking sad as Cream hugged him closer. That's how I lost him. That's how she lost who? Oh wait, I'm sure you know Cream never had a father, thus Vanilla had no husband. I guess it wasn't true love then, Amy taunted Vanilla instead of being reasonable. The camera zoomed in on Cream who blinked as a flashback started, no white borders thank Christ, with Cream and Vanilla walking along a park. Cream was holding a picnic basket. After a second she asked her mother where their father was. Vanilla glared at Cream who cringed and became quiet. It returned to the current scene with Vanilla slapping Amy across the face. How dare you speak of like that? The name was interrupted by the screen going black for that exact moment the name would be told. I was disappointed. Vanilla continued her conversation with Amy, now on the floor, stared up at her. He was a hero, a hero you would never be. He gave his life for all of us. Amy scoffed and got up, pouting angrily as she dusted her dress off. No one's a bigger hero than my Sonic coon. Vanilla pointed towards the exit. Leave! Amy idly waved her hand at Vanilla before exiting the building. Cream pleaded for Amy to come back, but the scene already showed her walking away from Vanilla's house. Vanilla pulled out a tissue as she started to cry. Cream walked over, worried about her mother. Vanilla bent down to Cream and gently hugged her, crying softly. Cream looked over and asked the question I had in my mind. Who was my father? As Vanilla sat down and pulled Cream onto her lap, the screen cut to black again. I sighed softly in disappointment, but patiently waited for the screen to return. I did not forget what you did to me. This time I didn't really need to jump. It was the same female voice that scared me in the other file, but much calmer and less distorted. It was soft and it sounded sad. It wasn't Vanilla or any other voice actor in the Japanese cast. I shrugged it off and continued to stare at my black screen. The screen returned with Amy knocking on Sonic's door calling his name lovingly. Sonic's house was similar to the living room you see in the storybook series with stairs going up. Sonic sat on the couch, his feet on the table. As he heard Amy's knocking, he groaned and sat up straight. It's her again, he muttered in an annoyed tone as he got up and walked towards the door before opening it. Sonic, you didn't forget about our date tonight, right? Amy smiled before turning to just walk off. It's probably a joke since Sonic promises Amy a date here and there, mostly when being out of character and he continuously forgets about them. Sonic faced Palm before closing the door again. He walked back to the couch before sitting down, noticeably sad. He looked up at something. The screen turned black again. Oh, come on! I muttered angrily, but I, decided, but I decided to wait again, hoping none of these messages would pop up, but it did. They murdered me. The voice whispered this time, a picture flashing for a split second. Being on my computer, I could reverse the player to the exact point the picture flashed, and I was quite surprised at what I saw. It was Princess Sally. She didn't have a new style or anything. She looked like she did it in a much better cartoon show, Sonic the Hedgehog, aka Sonic Sat AM. She was staring at the screen. Her face looked bland and empty. Sally was missing her mouth and the whole picture had a red tint to it, especially, now, especially her now crimson eyes. I snagged a screenshot of it, imported the image to MS Paint, and saved it to my computer. I still have the file, it's called sally.png. I continued to play the file. It took a while for the screen to return again and the picture of Sally disturbed me, but also made me happy. Did Sega not forget about Princess Sally after all? The screen returned. It had a faint white border to show it was a flashback scene. Does anybody remember Rosie the Rascal? The actual sweet little girl before that other pink hedgehog showed up? Yes, she was walking along a forest humming a playful tune. I think she was voiced by Cream's voice actress only using a different pitch. 
Rosie entered a house that I couldn't really recognize. It was a wooden hut with a with hay for a roof. The camera cut to inside. Most of the things inside were made of wood. At first I thought it was supposed to be something tribal, but then I noticed the handheld computer, Nicole, on the small round table. It hit me. Was this Sally's hut? Indeed. The camera cut to Princess Sally, who looked very pretty in the Sonic X style, by the way, staring out of the window. I hope Sonic will return from his mission soon. I'm worried about him. Sally's voice was the voice on the messages in the black screens. Rosie stood there looking at Sally in the background. Are you Sally Acorn? Rosie asked curiously as Sally whipped around, startled by her. Hmm? And who might you be? Rosie's smile faded and her expression was blank. Answer me. Sally blinked a few times but she answered anyway. Yes I am. The camera zoomed in on Rosie's face which isn't usual. And you love Sonic, right? And Sonic loves you. Sally seemed irritated at that standing up. Who are you? She asked again, sounding unnerved. Rosie didn't stop staring at Sally with those hateful brownish red eyes. Die. The screen cut to black a final time. A fan of Sally, I yelled out in dismay. Why would Sega do this? To me. To Sally. I've waited, tears welling up in my eyes. Be there. Please be there. Live. The file ended. I let my head sink down on my arm, sobbing softly. Sally would never come back. Those bastards at the company murdered Sally, and nobody would remember her. It stayed that way for a few more minutes before realizing I still had that other file. Hoping Sally would still be alive on it, I clicked the Prisa folder and opened the second DVD file. Black screen, like before. I've waited, it's still sniffling, being too lazy to blow my nose. The Sally image flashed again. Sonic, Sally's voice whispered. An image flashed across the screen of my laptop. It was the same image as before, but the pupils and white part of her eyes were gone, leaving her with empty black voids. The picture stayed this time, followed by a long silence. I was about to close the file, starting to sob again, but then I noticed the picture was changing. Black, gooish tears started to run down Sally's cheeks. Slowly. Very slowly. Suddenly, a loud screech interrupted my thoughts. Red tinted lights were now in place of her pupils staring right at me. I jumped and those red pupils followed me wherever I moved. Free. The image disappeared and the screen went to black again. I sighed and looked towards the ground but soon after that I heard the sound of wind blowing from my speakers. I looked at the screen again. Sonic was there standing in the middle of a graveyard. He bent down to one of the tombstones which was empty. The camera showed his sad face as he said, Good night my sweet princess, in a gentle loving tone and placed some flowers besides, beside the tombstone before he left. Right as Sonic was out of sight, Amy came over and looked down at the blank tombstone angrily. She scoffed. I can't believe he still won't give up. Before she raised her hammer and smashed the, tomb the tombstone as the file ended. I sighed sadly and closed the DVD player. When I looked at the files, the DVD files were gone. Instead of them, I saw a text file. I didn't really want to, but I opened it anyway. Amy wasn't supposed to exist. She was created to replace 2 at 11 Y. Enough. I closed the text file on the folder, but I didn't have time to recover as I was staring at Princess Sally replacing my desktop. Fortunately, I put a stop to that by restarting the laptop. It then booted up and it didn't have Sally anymore. My desktop is now back to normal. I hope you never find this episode online because you never know what you are about to end up watching. Story 2 Sonic the Hedgehog Lost Episode Can anyone help me out here? I'm looking for a lost episode of The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm sure some of you remember, if you're from the northern part of Virginia and watched the show, you may have seen this. Some backstory first, however. 
I first recall seeing this episode when I was 8. It was episode 66 of season 1, there was only one season, and it was only aired in Northern Virginia as the broadcasting station had ignored the notice not to play the final episode of The Bundle due to its, due to its extreme adult content. This was the station's choice as it had purchased the syndication rights for the area, but concerned parents later sued them after several children came down with light neural hemorrhaging that caused several nightmares and vomiting. Viewing this episode killed no one and older viewers seemed immune to the effects of whatever caused the bleeding, but needless to say, a freeze was put on the production and it was hushed up on the news. The show was replaced by the series simply named Sonic the Hedgehog. I started my search for the episode after the nightmares from watching the episode returned after 16 years. The nightmares were vivid, they contained visions of people in a long line, all of them clutching their faces in despair. The people in this line spread the full length of the street and all had seemingly abandoned their cars to join the others waiting. Everything had a dark red tone to it, like the sun was burning out the sunset but never fully went down. Those that weren't in the line littered the street dead. I can't recall how I can't recall much of the dream beyond hints of looting, things like a line of dead riot police, smash windows, a collapsed skyscraper in the distance, and upturned cars. But no one in the line paid attention to this. They simply sobbed as the line shifted forward. The nightmare ended with one of the members of the line looking directly at me. He said nothing but shifted to an unnatural pose. His arms bent at a 45 degree at 45 degree angles and his legs spread into a box over the ground, his mouth agape. As he did this, the rest of the people in the line did the same, striking a slightly different twisted pose. All were looking at me. I awoke with tears in my eyes. My logical step to finding this episode lies with the station that originally aired it. There is nothing odd about the station, its old management has long since moved on, committed suicide as the new manager pointed out to me. Over a cup of coffee, the new manager and I discussed the station's past. I intentionally eased into the subject of the lost episode, and as it turned out, I was right to do so. When I brought it up, John, as he will now be known, literally spilled his coffee on his lap. He told me the subject was a personal one to him. As it turns out, John was the original owner's son. He was kind enough to explain to me that the legal fees he was receiving in conjunction with the mail he was receiving from children and parents alike had pushed him too far and he hung himself in the family kitchen. I was a little taken back by this news so I figured I was digging too deep and decided to drop this madness, maybe call it a day. Before I could exit John's office, he told me he would send me the mail. His reasoning? He wanted me to know what happened. His curiosity was almost as deep as mine, which wasn't surprising considering this episode killed his father. I told him I'd take a look deeper into the subject and get back to him on anything I dug up. The letters were as one would expect. Angry mothers asking what kind of station would air such filth, legal fees ranging in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, enough to send any station broke in the 90s and of course drawings from children depicting scenes of the episode. There were things like the blood and unusually dull colors that persisted throughout and horrible things such as robotic vomiting blood and tails crying over the corpse of a feathered headless bird. One letter, however, caught my attention specifically. It was a letter from the studio that produced the series. Thank you for purchasing the rights to air The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog trademark Sega 1993 to 1994. All rights reserved. Encloses is the series list, episode descriptions, and episodes 1 through 66, the entirety of season 1, and legal information regarding ratings and air times. In poor handwriting at the bottom of the page, a scrawled note was placed with the words, Episode 66 is not to be aired. This is a database error and contains corrupted material. The initials JS followed. I set out, I set out to find this episode, but to no avail. My second plan was to ask the people who sent the angry letters about the episode about their take on it. Those who had not moved away since then gave me the canned, I don't know, or not this again responses, but I did chance upon one man around my age that remembers and taped the episode. He invited me in and showed me his VHS copy of the episode. It was badly decayed from the years of neglect in this garage, though, and I could only make out a few bits. Tails screaming at Sonic with tears in his eyes. How could you, Sonic? What have you done? The rest of the episode was static with the occasional scream and twisted figures, 
not animals or people, but figures staring at the viewer with their circular mouths and open black eyes emitting a slight screech. The tape sent chills up my spine and I asked if I could take the tape for research I was doing into the episode. He agreed quite readily and I promised to keep him updated about it. I took the tape back to John and we watched it for about 15 minutes until John jumped back in his seat. He told me he saw the figure with black eyes but it spoke for a brief moment. He claimed he saw its lips move, mouthing a word he thought was eternity. We watched that same one second flash for what must have been 30 times, and each time we both attempted to freeze the frame on the figure. It disappeared when the video paused. I called it a day there. We needed a better copy of the episode if we were to find out why it ended the entire series and caused me nightmares for much of my childhood. Short of traveling to France and talking to the animation studio, I gave them a call. They bluntly told me there was no episode 66. 65 was the last episode of the season. Knowing this was a dead end, I called again and asked for the contact information of the voice actors. Most of the information was out of date, it seemed. The information given for the voice actors of Robotnik, Scratch, Grounder, and Sonic all gave numbers not in service errors, or people told me I had the wrong number. However, I did manage to contact one person. Christopher Evan Welch was the voice of Tails. I managed to hook him for a fake interview about his roles in 90s television. As you would expect, Chris turned up wearing casual clothing and a smile on his face. He looked like the average guy in his late 20s. As he sat down, I asked about some of the roles in some of his roles in bands and television, working my way to Sonic. When I did get there, however, he got really quiet and evasive. I asked him specifically about episode 66 and he froze. His pupils almost retracted to nothing and he looked at me telling me the episodes only went up to 65. I knew better, of course, and asked him about his script, where he was talking to Sonic about something he had done. The man grabbed his face, not in frustration, but to wipe his eyes. They were beginning to well up. He took a deep breath. He told me the episode was written by Jeffrey Scott, and the usual spiel that follows. Jeffrey was a nice man and was very, and was very patient with Chris as he read the script, being 11 at the time. But as the first season drew to a close, Jeffrey had become very angry with everyone, even 11-year-old Chris. The voice actors for Robotnik and Sonic threatened to quit over his behavior, but the executive producer paid them both very large sums of cash in hand, right there, to read from the script Jeffrey had written. Apparently, Jeffrey had had an order from high up, the top of Sega as far as Chris knew at the time, to produce this episode, and it was listed as a business priority. Chris explained to me how, as they read the script, he felt great sorrow and terror. It was as if they had lost a close friend or family member, even seeing those people die before them. He told me of the scarring to his vocal cords from the screaming that was invoked by reading the script, even the extreme exhaustion of the other voice actors involved. The session ended with the security pulling the voice actors from the studio before things went even worse. Even his mother pulled him from the show the next day, fearing for his safety. I stopped the interview there and asked for a copy of the episode but none were ever sent ugh, but none were ever sent back to the voice actors. This is as far this is as far as I've come in search for episode 66. I've heard there may be a copy in the studio in France, but I have no way of getting there on my budget. I know it exists, and many more people out there must have a VHS copy. So that's why I asked the internet. Help me in my search. Please. Story 3 Lost Sonic Okay, I'm a big fan of old school Sonic games. I've played them all as a child. I have the first Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles. You name it, I have it. And yes, I play all of them on a Sega Genesis. So I was in the attic lately, cleaning up the crap I have in there. But while I was cleaning, I found this weird Sega Genesis cartridge. It had a piece of paper on there with the words Lost Sonic written on it. I really have no idea what the hell this was doing in my attic. I never remember this game from my childhood. But curiosity got the best of me, so I put the game in, grabbed my controller, and started playing. It started with the intro from the original song The Hedgehog, but some things were unusual about it. There was no background, just a black screen. And there was no title, just a giant ring with Sonic in it. But I still pushed start and the game began. It started with the same thing every old Sonic game started with. A green island stage with flowers and palm trees. But the zone didn't have a name, it only said Act 1. The music was Green Hell Zone, but slowed down like in the European version. 
There was also no life, time, score, or rings counter. There were no bannocks or hazards in the zone, but I still kept going. It was like your normal Sonic level. But then out of nowhere, Robotnik came and hit you. There were no rings in the zone, so I died. But instead of the normal death animation, the screen cut black and the death sound was heard. The game just froze there on a black screen. I pressed the reset button on the Sega Genesis and the game restarted. I was shocked this time. The title screen went through a huge change. The background turned blood red. Under the ring with Sonic on it, it said lost. And the music was screwed up. It was slowed down and missing a lot of notes. Sonic, however, was worse. His color scheme was lightened a lot and his eyes were red. Sonic was also frowning while blood was dripping from his eyes. In fear, I pressed the start button. The level started up. It was horrible. The top of the title screen, T-Soul on Epic C and TCA1 on the bottom. It took me a while to realize it, but it was Lost No Escape Act 1 backwards. Sonic was the same as he was on the title screen, light colored with red eyes, blood under his eyes. The music was the same as it was on the title screen. I played through the level. The level was underground themed with blood dripping from the top. Bones and puddles of blood surrounded the level. Some gore was found too. The only bannock was the centipede from Mystic Cave Zone. But instead of dropping an animal when you killed it, blood splattered out of it. There were also spikes with blood on the tips. And it's and in some cases acid that kills you in one hit. Every time you got hit, you go back to the start of the level. There were no checkpoints. The level was extremely difficult. I finally got through the level, but there was no signpost but a giant black ball. But then two ghoulish red eyes peeked out of the black ball. It then charged at me, making the screen go completely red. I thought it was going to do the same as last time and freeze immediately, but I was wrong. A message saying, a message saying, you couldn't escape, appeared with a picture of Sonic being hung by a bloody rope. I turned off the game. What the hell did I just play? I thought to myself. Was this really made by Sega or was this a bootleg? I didn't know that day and I still don't know today. But I do know where this game is now. It's in the trash. Story 4 Sonic 4 Episode 3 The Unreleased Game Another day of my life, a boring day I should say. Tomorrow was my birthday and I was kinda happy. I loved the Sonic franchise since Sonic 1 so I, always expect, so I expected a video game as a gift. I always played Sonic 1 in my room and I finished it a couple of times. I like that scene where Dr. Robotnik explodes once you beat him. I was out with my friends for dinner. We always take our bikes and go to Domino's to eat some pepperoni pizza. After we ate, me, Brandon, and Mike went back to our homes but we stopped at a video game store to get any new video games. The man working there, let's call him VG Man, walked to us and in a welcoming tone, Hi there, haven't seen you in a while. Oh hi, any new games? I said. Well I have one in the storage room, it was released two days ago. I first got it um, today this morning. He went to the storage room and got a DVD. Its cover had the words Sonic 4 EP3 written on it with a red marker I guess. We took it and walked to my house to try it out. I wish I never bought this. My friends left and I was home alone. My parents were on vacation in the Maldives. I, ta I tapped it into my PS4 and opened the game. The game started pretty normal. Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles were in the ring where it said Sonic 4 Episode 3. I was excited and, well, confused. This was cancelled, but how and why was it released? Knowing that it came in a handmade cover, I pressed X and began the first act. Zone Act. Wait. Zone Act Zero. Zone? What is Zone? And why is it Act Zero? Was this a hacked game? Or is, or is it an unfinished version? Despite that, I played it. It was the normal Green Hill Zone look, no music. I walked with Sonic in the level. It began getting darker and darker, then a screenshot of a dead couple eaten to death by what seemed like sharks appeared for a second. I jumped in my place and sweat was pouring from my face. 
Are these my fucking mom and dad? I thought it could be something else, but I felt they are dead. The music played finally. It was reversed. I unreversed it with a program. It was a song I didn't know. It spoke about death and such edgy. I said to myself, I looked at the screen. It said, Sonic has died, act zero, and what seemed like broken English. It went to the next act. No place to hide, act one. It had tails in it, like Sonic really died. I walked again. Emptiness, and this time there were pictures of Sonic's body cut into pieces. Under it was H-I-L-R-B-O-N-I. Other words were covered in black paint. It kept reappearing, scattered around the level. A figure appeared. It grabbed tails and screams can be heard. The lights went out. I opened my flashlight and walked in the room, in the rooms of the house, asking myself, did this, did the game do that to me? And I saw something. I can't describe this. Pictures of a dead Sonic, same from the level, appeared on every screen in the house. I thought I was hallucinating, knowing that this is somehow now 6 a.m. after midnight. I went to sleep, ignoring what happened today. The next day, I woke up to see the television news. Couple found drowning and cut in pieces by sharks in Maldives. It showed pictures of my mom and dad torn to pieces, same as that image in the game. I knew it. I dropped crying on the floor. I grabbed the game and a sledgehammer and destroyed it with all my rage and anger and sadness. I will never buy a game before double checking it on an emulator. Wow, that one kinda sucked.